first talk at an Eclipse Con, at least in Toulouse. <laughs> Um, and I enjoyed very much to be here. I will talk about uh, yeah, a possible solution for many pains we had in our company. And to give you an, a picture uh, of who I am and who the company is, uh, I'm working at Compex System House in, Karlsruhe, uh, in Heidelberg, in Germany. Uh, and we are uh, doing business with uh, our own ERP system. Uh, we are selling the system and we are uh, selling service around the system because, uh, as you can imagine, each customer wants standard software, but it should fit exactly to the processes he has. So there is an adoption uh, to the software needed, and that's what we do with the, in the project. We do that for more than 25 years now. And uh, during this time, we created a huge software system which is based on old, from today's perspective, old technologies. So we had to decide a few years ago that we want to replace our basis. And uh, to do that, we thought that it would be a good idea to use things that are around there and to combine them to something new and valuable for ourselves and our customers. So this is a picture which was uh, the result of a brainstorming session five years ago where we saw our uh, yeah, how we would define our mission. And, okay, we started following these uh, principles. Mm -hmm. We wanted to be open, we wanted to use standards, and we wanted to integrate collaborative processes into our system because Collaboration is also in business software a very important thing. And one very other very important thing is to become independent from software technologies. So the idea was to implement things on a level that is above a program language or above an API. So we wanted to put the, the knowledge about the software into a model and be able <coughs> to replace the under, underlying technology uh, if it's needed by replacing the inferrer, by uh, replacing the generator. So that was the leading idea. And we named it B because we named our uh, philosophy was for a long time to have a business engineering environment to do the adaption to the programs and to have a process met uh, uh, project method, uh, the best en enterprise engineering, which is uh, our project model how we do the project with the customers. And uh, yeah, the, the method is based on a combination of vModel XT and Scrum. And depending on the, on the phase in the project, we use different approaches. Okay, so the the idea after three years or two years of thinking how we can do it was why not using Eclipse-based software because it's a free software and why not going with the whole project to the Eclipse Foundation. <coughs> so the OSBP project was born and you might wonder why there is an OSBP 
and an OSB. Uh, the reason is that Eclipse does not like all the software we have embedded. So LGPL is something bad in the sense of Eclipse IP. <coughs> but you can, of course, use it and build software upon it. Uh, so we had to separate things and we had to end up with two names. Okay, but the principle is the same. We do modeling based on a technology stack to create applications. That's basically the, the story. And we have a whole bunch of uh, frameworks included which you might know, <laughs> everything that is useful to build an application. We define grammars around it. We use models to uh, describe the business. And we create the code that is building the application. So. We didn't want to reinvent wheels with that. We wanted to use good software, stable software that is already there. OK, a long list. Another long list. The next long list, which is are the parts that are in the OSB world, not in the OSBP. Technology for the infrastructure, which is well known, I think. It's uh, fully embedded in Eclipse. So I'm following all these talks that bring IDEs into the web, because I would really appreciate <laughs> if we can get there. But at the moment, we're sitting inside Eclipse and have uh, all the yeah tools integrated okay what is typical software development today someone writes a specification a developer is going to code and that's it as i said we don't want to do that in this way we don't want to do direct programming we want to model the know-how of the uh, application into, yeah, into models, keep it in models, have a DSL uh, that covers the interface to the, to the APIs. We have a graphical and a uh, text representation. And then the generator code uh, creates us the code, for example, for the UI, for the uh, data interchange, as we call it. So interfaces to uh, Excel or XML files. Uh, we have an integration with BPM. We have uh, an integration with a, a scheduling component to, to uh, yeah, trigger exports, imports to other systems, because that's something we use very heavily in our system. And then we get an application that is a browser application <coughs> based on databases, whatever you, whatever you like. It's Hibernate, uh, no, JPA with the Eclipse Link implementation is underneath. So everything Eclipse Link can do can be part of the application. And yeah, we did this because models are a representation of a system, system which um, generalize the system description and the abstraction in 
which comes with the modeling process is a very, um, yeah, very good advantage of this whole um, of this whole process because then you have no dependency to the code itself. So, uh, yeah, the model that describes selected aspects is called the domain model. I'm sure you're all familiar with domain models and domain-specific languages. And uh, so at the end, we created PSLs for all the single purposes. <laughs> The advantage you get is that the knowledge about the programming is definitely decoupled from the professional knowledge, which leads to the idea that in the uh, specification process with the customer, you don't need a developer. You can have uh, a project, uh, a member of the project team uh, writing already a model instead of a specification. That's our idea, to make the models uh, very close, or the, the DSL very close to natural language so that you can uh, write down your problem speci uh, description <coughs> in a way that uh, persons can do that are not really developers. So you keep the developers in the back end <laughs> and let them develop the, the DSLs and the grammars and all these things. And the project people can do uh, the business with the customer and get the information from the customer and write a prototyped uh, application already during the first process. That's the idea. Okay, and so we come from a, from the formal semantic models to the meta models to the models to the inferior to the code. Seems to be a long way, <laughs> but at the end, uh, the guy using it is really not bothered with that. <laughs> Okay, we have, yeah, by, when we designed the whole architecture, we had these paradigms in mind. The domain know-how should be stored in models, not in code. Coding know-how and patterns are in the generators. So if you do a mistake, it will show up everywhere, which increases the chance to find it. It sounds terrible for people <laughs> that, that are not familiar with uh, development, but if I can drill it down to one source uh, of a problem, I solve it at this one point and everything is fine. And that's why we think applications based on OSBP or OSB are future-proof and they are independent, mostly, from the frameworks that are used today because the frameworks can be replaced from the programming languages because which programming language is uh, generated doesn't matter. It's simply a text file that is created. And from the system environments like the databases, operating systems, and other devices because all is uh, under an abstraction layer. <coughs> to give you only an impression, I'm not going to explain that in detail, but you can see here everything starts with the entity and it ends less or more with a perspective, as you know it probably from the Eclipse IDE which is the underlying model for the whole 
application. And for yeah, each uh, purpose, we have defined a DSL to, for example, define entities, uh, collect them in data marts. Data marts are uh, designed to combine entities like views in, a, in an SQL statement to present these in a table and to use the perspective in the table. The entity has a data transfer object on top which is used in the dialogue which is used in the perspective. So that's how things combine. The data mart also is used in the chart and the report. So if you define data mart once, you can use the same data in the table, in the chart, in the report, if it fits the, the requirement. <coughs> so it's highly reusable and really easy to define. Okay. And that's what I wanted to say about that. <laughs> okay, in the end, we have the meta model covering the API uh, prototypes and the generated code, which is really calling the APIs. And we get an application which follows this architecture. We have the data layer, as we all know it, persistence, integration. We have a security layer, which means uh, the identification of the people, login, and access rights to the data. Uh, there's a role concept in it that allows you to define uh, the access on an attribute level in the entity. So you can allow read access, non-visibility or full access to the attributes. <coughs> there are services uh, to communicate with other systems. We have a workflow engine, the BPM integration is in there. Uh, to be able to build workflows, business workflows, um, because not everything is just a table and a dialogue and entering data. Uh, we have different view models and an application lay layout model, which is the E4 model. And on top of it, uh, there's a Vardin. Uh, used as the UI front-end technology. Okay. Why did we do it? <laughs> we wanted to reduce the time to market and the total cost of ownership because in the last 25 years we found that it came to problems because the entity model or the entity description, I have to say, in the legacy system and the front-end description did not match properly. And that's something that showed up at a very late stage in the production process. If we have been lucky, it showed up in our internal tests. Otherwise, it showed up in customer production. And you don't want that. So with the new technology, you have that already in the developer's IDE showing up that it's not fitting. <coughs> we wanted to use open standards because our company is around about 50 people and we are not able to create all the software that is needed uh, to build an such an application, so we have to use other software and we wanted to use de facto standards that are out there. And we wanted to protect the investments of our customers because uh, 
our customers want to evolve their own systems and adapt them to new technologies probably and this is all uh, yeah uh, there's a lot of money needed to do that in the old world and we hope we have no experience yet but we hope that this will be uh, much better and at the end all these uh, APIs contain lots of experience. These frameworks have collected work of many thousands of developers. And why not use it when it's there? Yeah, best proven, <laughs> model driven what I said, uh, the customizability of the models is another point where we think that it's much easier to uh, customize and maintain various versions of these models than of whole, source, uh, whole code. And we wanted to have a nice user interface and now I'm going to show it. What am I going to show? I will show you how we thought about extending existing applications. I start with the basic application I already have there to make it not too long. <laughs> And I just show you the application as it is right now. Did I launch it? see it has been working today <laughs> we'll come back soon and what you already can see here is we have uh, user management we have a role the administrator is the role the admin has we have the login opens a definable perspective can be defined what you want to see here we have a menu I want to show you uh, there's not too much in <laughs> take this one that's the standard table you get when you define your entity and the data mart that's the dialogue. You cannot see it, but the fields are in a light gray here. Um, you get, yeah, that all f is part of the uh, of the framework, and you can, for example, use another theme. like this so I didn't change anything just changing the theme it's all internationalized I'm not sure if someone translated here <laughs> Yeah, you can imagine writing things and saving it is not a big deal. 
Okay, now I'm going to extend this application by just taking a, a, a CS a comma separated file with an entity description and the data. Let it drop it into the IDE. to sit down, add some information because the CSV has no meta information. Come on, we need a dialogue. Here it is. Okay, the ID is an ID field. The brand owner is a reference to the brand owner I have already in the in the model. Brand type is the same. Reference to the brand type. And this is something uh, identifying the brand logos that are in the file system in a directory. I have to choose the directory. Where is it? Okay, a mime type would be nice. And an extension. I have added an extension. Come on. It doesn't love me. Okay, don't know why. It's not that important that we have the pictures. <laughs> okay, then I create the application by pressing this button. Now I'm asked to define the domain key. Now I'm creating the application. And now we have to wait a little. What is happening now? Now it's extending the models based on the entity model, which is here. You see I have Git behind it, it's changed it. Uh, we will see more changes now coming. Uh, the entity model, it creates a data mod, which is more up, and we end up in the perspective and the menu. And as soon as it is done, Stop the application. As you can see, I have a table, change in the table, change in the perspective, change in the menu. Change in action, which describes the buttons that are available in the dialogues. A change in the authorization because the new entity is now added to the authorization for the administrator. And that 
is the major thing. And now I start it again. Yeah, it's now starting the web server. It's based on Jetty. And as before, if it's getting read, it's good because someone had the idea the positive message should be read. <laughs> so that's for later. <laughs> now we're back again. Okay, now I should have the brand. That's what I added. And of course it's empty at the moment. But here I have a magic button. Do the import. I press it. And hopefully something happens. We have now all the data from my CSV and everything is in there and it found the links to the owners, the reference and if it had worked we would have here a picture <laughs> but today it doesn't love me. Okay, so that's an easy step to create the first version of your application. And then you can go into the models and do refinements, whatever you like. And at the end, I have a sample how it can look like. This is the organization. That can be a sample for an organization. Uh, that's how it looks like when we have pictures in the table. A little bigger. And as you have seen, there is a coupling between the tables and the dialogues. When I select something in the, in the table, I get the data in the dialog. Uh, if you have relations like here with the employees and the salaries of the employee, we have all salaries for an employee in a separate table behind the di dialog. If I click on that, you see down here the next dialog depending on what is selected up there. Then there is a lot of, uh, yeah, of possibilities to, to format a table. As you can see, based on rules, you get different colors. You can use icons instead of values here. Um, and you can create graphs based on either uh, views, as I said before, or uh, based on a cube. We integrated Mondrian cube and the Mondrian cube technology uh, to have uh, more complex uh, things in the graphs, or that's a, for example a, a cube here. Yeah, that's it from my side. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, for generated application, does it um, generate also a POM file from Maven so we can integrate it or generate a word directly? Yeah, we have. Um, a wizard to create the basic stop application because that's a little bit a mess to create a Maven application. <laughs> and uh, so you get a new project that has all the parts and you can start modeling within the project. Uh, yes, or a complete application, a product. You can give the zip file or whatever it is then. Hi, um, you showed the DMN diagram at the beginning. Yeah. Um, is there any other kind of models which you present? It shows the 
behavior aspect of the system. Implement the only one. You said uh, yeah. services and business. Yeah, tools. yeah. Where do those come from? Yeah, they. Uh, I have to go through the models. They are not all represented in a graphical way at the moment. Uh, we have, for example, the, the data interchange thing, which is also just a model. And in in the easy simple configuration I just say I want to exchange the, the whole entity here but you can also define single attributes that you want to exchange and uh, or import so it's very flexible we try to make it as easy as possible by leaving things away or by if you don't say anything about a specific thing we take everything, or we have a, a, a reasonable default uh, for the things. And that's how the whole system is built. Uh, for graphical representations, we're not as far as we could be. <laughs> um, but the VPM, because of its nature, comes with a, a graphical model and the entity is the easy part for the graphical modeling. Um, all the others wait to be uh, defined. So if you think it's um, program agnostic, right? Database agnostic. Does that mean that you can extend this for, so for other languages? Say, so my company, we have object scripts. We have our syntax and everything. Uh, for modeling business processes. Could this be extended to support another language? Yes, the basic idea is to do that, but you have, of course, to decide if you have to write an uh, own DSL for that, yeah. or you extend, uh, or you change the code generation of an existing DSL to the script language, mm -hmm. to the language. Where um, no, because that's in the software factory <laughs> and I don't have these things with me. So that's a whole bunch of, yeah. That, that's what I have here is an Eclipse IDE with an installed software factory. You can download it from a P2 repository, install it, and then use it to model the application. And what you asked right now is to to extending the software factory. Yeah. Okay. More questions? So I thank you for your interest.